everyone and welcome back. Mindy here today for Lawn Fawn and today I'm going to be creating a wintry scene shadow box using some really adorable critters. So my idea with this was the critters looking at the first snowfall. To me that's always magical when you first see the snowflakes falling and so that is what I wanted to create. I'm starting off with the stamp set Winter Skies and I decided on these two individual critters. I actually don't end up using uh, the bear, but I had it here just in case. So I'm lining these up with my Misty tool on the Lawn Fawn white cardstock. This is great for Copic coloring. It's one of my favorites. And I'm using the jet black ink to stamp those on since that is Copic friendly. I'm also taking some of the trees off of the Winter Skies stamp set. So I'm just stamping a couple of those. Then I'm also bringing in these adorable critters from the For You Deer stamp set. And I'm using the backside stamps of this one. I thought that really just kind of matched the other two characters I had that were showing the backside of them. And so I have the deer and the bear on this. And I'm stamping those twice using the jet black ink. And then I could start doing some Copic coloring. Since there is a decent amount of space on these critters uh, to do the Copic coloring, I decided I'm going to talk a little bit about my coloring. Typically, to get the depth and the shading that I prefer, I go over my images twice when I have enough room to do it. So I have all of my colors listed here at the top. I typically will start from darkest to lightest. If there's uh, a decent area to color, I do start with my darkest and blend my way down. For these little trees, I'm adding the darker shade uh, at the top of the tree and then right under each little section and then blending those out with those colors I have listed on the screen. And that to me, it really just gives the images dimension. They don't look flat. And I'm going to color the same way through all of my critters. So for the bear here, I'm starting with a W4. And the W's or even the cool grays are a nice color to start with if you wanted to add a little bit more shading to it without going to a, a super dark color. So I did my shading areas uh, where the bum is. So on the head there, I would think that bum would be casting a little bit of a shadow on the head. And then on the outside a little bit, just to kind of round that out. And I also did go around the entire uh, backside and the inside of the legs. And then same thing, I'm going to blend out with all of those colors, the E44, E43, and E42. And I'll do it twice. Sometimes I'll even come back in a third time with my uh, W4 just depending on how that depth is looking to me. So I guess that is my biggest, I don't want to say trick, but that's my biggest thing I do to get that dimension is using a three color combo when it comes to my markers and really giving it that depth and blending it out. So next up, I'll color the deer and I'm going to do that very similar. I'm adding shading to the back side of the head where uh, the bum is kind of casting a shadow onto the head. Also to the inside parts of the ears because I think the antlers would be casting a shadow. And then same thing going around that outer edge and the inside of the legs. This is just all my personal preference, um, what I'm comfortable coloring or how I'm comfortable coloring. And then I do blend it out. Now this is giving it where the lightest area is going to be more towards the center of these characters. It just depends on where you want your light source to come from. I wasn't really sure being that they're going to be in a pop-up box, so I just did it where my light source is kind of shining directly at them. You could do it if you have a light source coming from the right or the left. just depends, but this is how I decided where I wanted my light source to be. And then going through and blending those out. And like I said, once in a while coming back in with that darkest color, just depending on how it's looking to me. Another thing with using the white cardstock is the Copic markers tend to sink into the cardstock a little bit more, which is also another reason I like to go over them twice. 
And if you're just not sure if you're feeling it as far as how they're blending or how it's sitting, just walk away from it for a little bit. Sometimes those colors need time to soak into the cardstock. And most likely when you come back to it, you'll be happy with it. So for the raccoon, I'm doing W6, W4, and W2. I added shadow above where the scarf is and also below it. And I also added a little bit of shadow right above the tail. To me, that would be where shadows would be cast. I'm blending those out. And then I came in with W8 and W6 for those stripes on the tail. And same thing, colored those twice, blended those out. And I was really happy with the smooth blend. And then I also did for the hooves the W6 uh, and W4 for my deer. The antlers is just an E44 and then an E41, just enough to give that dimension. And now for my scarf, I'm doing R39, R35, and R32. And I just added that R39 right where the lines are. I didn't do too much of it, just enough to make that distinction and blending them out. So then I'm going to use the coordinating dies to die cut all of these apart. And I'm going to use post-it tape to hold those in place so that they don't shift or move when I run them through my die cutting machine. I do apologize that I'm sounding a little stuffy right now. I have a horrible head cold, so I'm, I'm pretty stuffed up in the nose. So I apologize if I sound a little different than I normally do. So once I run those through my die, my die cutting machine, I can just pop those out. That's the great thing about using post-it tape is it doesn't leave any, uh, it doesn't tear my paper. Everything just pops right on out. And then just matching up my dies back into the stamps that it goes with so I don't lose them on my craft table. Now I have these adorable little critters to start creating my scene. So I need some snowflakes. So I'm using the mini snowflakes die and I'm using the three smallest ones that come in that set and I'm putting those onto some pixie dust cardstock so they have lots of sparkle and they die cut beautifully out of the glitter cardstock. This is great glitter cardstock. That glitter does not come off. Then I'm also going to be taking the forest border die with some noble fur cardstock. It didn't die cut through all the way on the one side just of human error, that's how I ran it through, and that was perfectly fine, because I'm going to be trimming that down anyway. So now I'm just bringing in my dies to start die cutting my shadow box. So I need the bigger one, I'm going to need a window, and then the hills. For my hills, I'm going to use this green pattern paper. This is from the Nitpicky Fall Paper Pack. So I'm die cutting both of these and I will actually cut another one of these hills so I have three hills total. I wanted an extra hill so that I can attach my snowflakes to. So that is why I have three of them there. For the main portion of my shadow box, I'm going to use wood grain cardstock. I just thought that gave it a really nice woodsy feel. You could also use the paper bag cardstock. And then this is uh, the die I'm going to use to cut out the window. So I'm just going to line that up in there and hold it down with post-it tape because I want the edges around it to be even. I don't want it to shift while I'm moving this or running it through my die cut machine. And so that cut a perfect window out of one panel for my shadow box. And I'll also run another one through that doesn't have that window in it. So this is also some pattern paper from that nitpick, nitpicky uh, fall paper pack. And I just trimmed that down to fit that back panel. There's little score lines that the die creates. So I'm just going to go through and fold those over and crease them with the bone folder. And I'll do that on both pieces. The piece without the window die cut is going to be the back of the shadow box. And that is where I want to create my snowy scene. Now I do have a couple mistakes here and I do show you how I fix them. This is going to be one of them. What I did was glue the pattern paper down first. What I should have done is taken one of those tabs and attached that 
to the other panel right away to complete one long panel. And I'll show you how I end up correcting it uh, a little bit later in the video, but that's what you should do first is get one tab glued down. I think it's important in videos to see errors that are made and how that can be fixed because it happens. It definitely happens a lot to me. I don't always show them, but I think it's important to show how we can fix them too. So now I need to create my snowy scene and I'm using the embossing pen from Lawn Fawn and I'm just adding little dots all over my background. And then I'm gonna sprinkle this with textured embossing powder. I'm not gonna heat set that yet. I just sprinkled that on so I could see where my dots are. And then I'm gonna come back in and do some more all over the green card stop. And this is just help setting the scene for my snowflakes. Not quite winter, it's just starting to snow. Then I can go ahead and heat set that. The textured embossing powder is kind of tricky. It isn't real shiny like regular embossing powder would be, so it's kind of hard to see when it's fully melted. And you'll see that in a moment too. <laughs> so the next thing I want to do is I'm adding just a dusting of snow to my hills. So I'm using a quickie glue pen and the Prisma glitter and adding just a little bit to the top of each hills. And I'll do that for all three of these. And with the quickie glue pen, it is it does dry quick, so that's why I'm doing them each individually and just shaking that off onto a piece of scratch paper. As I'm building my scene, this is going to be the sentiment for the front of my box. And this is using the Ready Set Snow stamp set. I thought this label stamp was really cute and small enough to add to the front. And it says ready set snow and I thought that just worked out really perfect for the scene that I was going for I'm stamping that with clear embossing ink onto some chili pepper cardstock I did prep my cardstock first but as you can see I have a little smudge at the bottom and that's okay I'm die cutting this so uh, that didn't phase me at all so I just sprinkled on regular white embossing powder from Lawn Fawn and then heat setting that and die cutting that with the coordinating die. So now we could start putting our box together. So I am using some 1 8 of an inch uh, score tape. This is a really strong tape, so it's going to hold my box together really well. And I'm adding it to those tabs and to the tabs on each side of the hills. I did set them off on the side to dry for a little while. That's kind of why I was doing my sentiment and some of my other prep work so that this had time to dry a little bit. And just pushing those down really good, making sure that that's stuck really good. And I'm just figuring out where my hills are going to go since I had two that were cut exactly the same. And now you're going to see one of my oopses. So this is where I'm realizing that that tab needed to be glued first. So like I said, if you were creating this, I would put this tab down first before attaching your scene. Luckily, I was able to just slide my finger underneath that edge and kind of pry that up just a little bit. And then I could slide my tab in there. And then as I was pushing down, I kind of noticed my some of my embossing powder wasn't completely heat set, so I'm going to fix that as well. But first, I'm noticing as I'm trying to close my box that this needed to be trimmed down. So I'm just folding that over and I'm just trimming this down so that way when the box folds flat, nothing is going to get in the way and it's just going to be a really nice even crease. So like I said, I know this video was a little bit longer due to some of my oopses. But I think they're important to see. There's a lot of work that went into the prepping of this and your cardstock. You know, that's uh, something you don't want to waste. So this is how I was fixing things. And then you could see I'm coming back in and just heat setting that again, making sure that my snow uh, was good and set. Then I'm going to come in and I'm going to add my hills before I completely close my box. This is up to you how you want to do it. I decided to 
try and do this before I shut everything. I thought that would be a little bit easier than trying to get in between uh, my box pieces. So I attached the front one. This one is pretty close to the window. And then I'm removing adhesive from the one side and putting that behind it, just getting a little bit of space. And I'm folding those over, just making sure they're lining up and that everything is straight. And then I'll come in with the third one here. Now this third one, like I said, you're not going to really see it much. It was more of something to attach my snowflakes to. And you'll see that here shortly. But this was just kind of something for me to attach things to. I'm not too worried if it's showing through. If you wanted it to show, you could move it up higher a little bit. So then I removed the adhesive on the other side. I'm folding those tabs down. I want those folded down. So when I close this or when I fold this over, that is going to attach to the cardstock. And then this is going to fold flat really nice. So these are great. These fit perfectly in a uh, regular envelope, an A2 size envelope. And then I did remove the adhesive on the other tab and fold this over so my box was complete. And I kind of just go back and forth, folding it from one side to another, making sure that everything is creased really nice and there's no bumps in there. So it would mail great. And so the scene is really starting to shape up. You could also decorate the other two sides of the inside of the box if you wanted. I just opted not to for this point. Now for the snowflakes, I am using some uh, little strips of acetate that I had cut down. You could use your you know, clear cardstock or if you have some uh, stamp protectors, things like that. And I cut them into strips. They're fairly long strips, I'd say maybe about three inches. I left myself room in case I needed them to be longer. I wanted the snowflakes to be staggered in the background and I can always trim it down. I'm just going to go in and start creating my scene with the critters. So I added my little tree there first and then that cute little deer. And I'm just holding this down for a couple seconds, making sure that that glue is sticking really well to the pattern paper. This is where tweezers definitely come in handy. They help you kind of get into those little areas. And I'm using the Lawn Fawn liquid glue really quick and then I put my bear in the middle so I staggered my critters so that I could see them all the bear I kind of wanted to have in the front but he was just so big he would have taken up uh, quite a bit of the front there my raccoon I think would have gotten lost if I would have put him inside so I'm just staggering them so I could see them all through my window and I think that's looking really cute and now I have my three strips of acetate here that I'm going to attach the snowflakes to with the Lawn Fawn liquid glue. And this is just to give the illusion of, of it snowing. So I have the snow in the background, but I really wanted to add some more sparkle to it and more of a visual of what they're looking at. So I think that's where the snowflakes were super helpful with this. And using the acetate, you're not going to really see it. I mean... You will, obviously, if you're looking at it up close, but kind of far away, it's just giving the illusion that they're floating in the air coming down. So I thought that was super cool. And I decided to use the double-sided tape to attach those two. I kind of lined up about where I wanted it to peek through and then just push that down with my fingers from the bottom to hold those in place. I put a little bit more on this middle piece because the it was going to be by the bear or attached to the bear. So I had a little bit more room to put some adhesive on. And same thing with that third one, just staggering it off on the side and trimming off any of the extra that I had hanging at the bottom. And the last part is just attaching the sentiment to the top of the box using the tweezers and the Lawn Fawn liquid glue. And that is going to finish up my project for today. So I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for joining me and have an amazing day.